Hey, welcome to Jez B Reviews. Today's going to be Cracker Yak. So, uh, Cracker Yak, uh, it doesn't say if it's actually Matilda Bay, but Matilda Bay is owned by CUB or Asahi these days. CUB bought out by Asahi a little while ago. Uh, we're going to taste 100% malt craft lager. Now, this is, the, uh, this is one of the issues with this. Uh, they call it a craft lager. Okay, so uh, this is a huge corporation. And it's not craft. It's what I call crafty. I've been calling it crafty for years. And to me, it's crafty. Crafty marketing makes Joe Blow think that this is a craft beer. I've got no problem with uh, with the huge breweries. I like their beers. Not all of them, but I like some of them. But um, I just think putting craft on the back. That's why if you ever, if you want to make sure you, if you're big into independence, just look the independent owned on the back. Uh, most of the independents are in. I will have it display that logo. Okay, so it's not insane. Just saying Yak Brewing in the back. Not insane Matilda Bay anymore. Uh, I used to be a huge fan of the uh, original Fat Yak. Drink a lot of it. Um, but yeah, so let's just go through actually. What is it? How many mils? Where are they telling us? Oh, it's up the top of you in the neck. 345 mils. It's pretty much a standard size coming out of that brewery. And uh, was it? I think it's... 4.2. Where's the ABV? Okay, in super small writing. I'm no joke. 4.2% ABV just up here. It's outrageous. I should have it a little bit bigger, a bit more uh, easy sighting of that. So uh, anyway, I've got that, that's all I know. Pour it out. See, it's not getting much of a head here. Let's get aggressive. Okay, had to pour highly, uh, quite vigorous there. All right, in the glass, we've got a pretty clear, uh, light golden appearance. It's actually pretty clear though. Little bubbles streaming up the nose. Yeah, it smells. Uh, I'm getting a bit of malt. I'm getting also a bit of hop. Uh, more malt, actually. You give me more malt there. Anyway, now let's get into it. Cheers. All right, so it wets the mouth. The first impressions, I wouldn't call it, I wouldn't say it's a very snappy lager. There's definitely some malt there, some breadiness there. It reminds me somewhat to a certain degree of a German Pilsner uh, with the, the, the flavor. On the back end, I think it may be a super pride or pride of ring would be. It's got that, a little bit of that cardboard um, bitterness flavor at the back. I'm not saying it's all prior ring wood, then maybe there's another, uh, there's a noble hopper in there. It's different to the James Guy Shackles. Okay, so it's drying in the background, it's getting a bitterness there. Very Australian. I was expecting more something European style. I did get a bit of Pilsner like to the beer early on, but the more I drink it, the more I'm getting the Australian lager flavor coming through. So probably be pretty uh, popular for a lot of drinkers. It wasn't quite snappy on the tongue. I wouldn't say it's crisp, but it, it just dry at the back end. The more it has, the more dry and um, highly drinkable, highly sessionable. But there is better interpretations. If they're going for an Australian lager or malt lager, there's probably better interpretations out there. So, so like I said, yeah, it's sessionable. You could drink it. It's pretty low ABV. Um, price point, I did buy just a stubby, so I can't remember how much I paid. I got bought a mixed six pack of Dan Murphy's. It's got a very light to medium body, maybe leaning on the lighter side. And yeah, the more I have it, the more it dries. But I wouldn't say it's crisp. So. So for a score, I'd say it's a satisfactory. I'll give it a satisfactory. Uh, it does the job, uh, but I'd choose other options. I'd never buy. I'll never buy it again. But uh, definitely drinkable. If someone gives it to you, don't uh, turn it back. Just drink it. But uh, yeah. All right. 
once again, I'll uh, be back for another Jez Beer Reviews. You guys all take care, and I'll see you in the next one. See you all. Bye.